So if you watched Sundays with subscribers yesterday, which is the weekly show we do for undivided subscribers, we had just a heartbreaking interview uh, with the aunt of Wendy Trainer. And if you've lived in our area long enough, uh, Wendy Trainer's name uh, and her face will look and sound familiar to you. And that is because um, it was a horrendous crime. I mean, here you have a 25-year-old girl who is in her apartment in Milton that she just moved into, and she is shot and killed by her estranged boyfriend, Joshua Ellis. And, you know, I think some of the true heartbreaking aspects of the crime, I mean, she's left there dead in her apartment. Her family, her dad and her uncle find her a week later um, dead. Uh, and you can't only imagine for family, for a family how heartbreaking that would be, and we'll get into a little bit of it. But that case went to trial in 2019, and the evidence against Joshua Ellis was overwhelming. Uh, there was no question that he had done this, and he tried to trot out some BS self-defense claim, which the judge absolutely rejected wholesale. So anyway, Joshua Ellis, he ends up getting convicted, um, sentenced to more than 23 years, and which I think is is not enough, but that was what they were able to do given the crime he was charged with. And then, and you might not know this if you didn't follow the case um, through the process, he ends up appealing his conviction because of something that happened during jury selection in his initial trial. So during jury selection, this is the article from the Seattle Times, during jury selection, the prosecutor was accused of using a racist stereotype, essentially. So during jury selection, there was this exercise on implicit bias, and the prosecutor had mentioned the people versus O.J. Simpson. And uh, Ellis's defense team ended up appealing on that basis, saying that it unduly prejudiced the jury, and a Washington state appellate court ended up overturning the conviction and ordering a new trial of Joshua Ellis. And so it seems to me that as prosecutors looked at that and they said, okay, the only issue with this case was something that happened in jury selection. The facts of the case are overwhelmingly solid. So let's take this guy to trial again. Let's get a conviction again. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. But instead, Pierce County prosecutors, it turns out, have, I mean, I don't think that it's in stone yet, but they are entertaining a sweetheart plea deal for Joshua Ellis that if it's accepted, could see Joshua Ellis out of prison by 2025. I want you to consider that for a second. The crime happened in 2017. The idea of someone who murdered his estranged girlfriend in cold blood, the idea of him being able to get out of prison and see the light of day by 2025 is insane. And this plea deal, by any common sense standard, is ridiculous. So Wendy Trainer's family, I mean, they now have hired a, someone to help them with PR to get the media to pay attention to this case before the plea deal is potentially accepted this Friday. So on uh, Sundays with subscribers yesterday, we had on Sherry Jones, who is the aunt of Wendy Trainer, And she talked to us about this continuing heartbreak for the family and also about their devastation at the concept of Joshua Ellis getting out of prison in just a few years. She was a beautiful girl, just beautiful, friendly, loving, caring, hardworking, just such a loss, such a devastation. She'll never have children, never be able to get married. I mean, her mom is just, uh, her mom, her dad, her brother, but mainly her mom that I, because it's my sister. Yeah. I just see how devastated she is. I can't imagine. Yes. And you know, you talk about justice and you hear that, you know, from families, we want justice. And that looks different for different people, right? But in that first trial, did you feel like the outcome of that first trial was justice for you? No. Why not? It wasn't enough. Yeah. It wasn't enough for us. Yeah. But it was the maximum amount that he could give. And the judge did say that. He, he did say said, that. He said, I wish I could do more. He wished that he could do more. Uh, for us, no. I mean, would life, she doesn't have a life. Yeah. Every Christmas we have, every holiday we have, it's like there's an empty hole. He still has his children, not that he ever visited his children, but he still has children. Um, we don't have that for Wendy. Yeah. And now they want to cut it in half and give him, you know, instead of 230 months, 120 months. I mean, What? Initial trial happens. The conviction happened. wasn't enough, but at least there's some, you know, finality to his case. When did you find out that that was not the case, that 
his conviction would be tossed out. Well, we knew that they had filed for an appeal. Yeah. And um, we had heard through the grapevine, whatever, they just thought they would try it and see what happened and throw it and see if anything stuck to the... It did. Wow. And everybody was shocked over that the reasoning behind it, why it was given, approved. So when they came to us with this appeal deal, I was on vacation and... um, the head detective was on vacation. We came back the day before the trial was supposed to start. Nobody had told us anything till the day before the trial was to start. So everybody came back all amped up, just scared, ready to go and hit it again. And they said, oh, we have a plea deal. What? In this latest go around. Yeah, latest get go around. And uh, we knew nothing about it. The, no, none of the family knew anything no, about a plea deal. No. And we're all sitting there on a Zoom conference just going, are you kidding me? what? And then we found out what the terms were. And that's just too much, too much. Can you imagine the prospect of him getting out in 2025? Oh, we're just petrified. I mean, we're getting prepared for the sentencing for when the family can speak. I don't know who they're going to let speak, but we're all doing our impact statements. Um, you know, it's just, it's horrible. Now there's, um, seven second cousins now that have been born since Wendy's been, gone that she's not had a chance to meet. I mean, it's affected our whole family. It's just down generation to generation. We can never let it go. It's like every day we mention something about her, you know, it's uh, her poor parents, her brother. I just, my children, it's terrible. Who are you more upset with at this stage? Is it Joshua or is it the system? That's a very hard question. Yeah. To me, I mean, I'm very, very unhappy with the system. I've been in the legal field for since 1977, and I've been retired for a while, but I've seen a huge shift, and I'm not happy with it. Yeah. doesn't seem like justice. No, it's not justice. Yeah, and you can go to undividedpod.com, undividedpod.com to watch that entire interview with Sherry Jones, again, the aunt of Wendy Trainer. We appreciate her. I can't imagine that's very easy for them. I mean, think about what that family has been through. And I'm going to talk about cold action, what we may be able to do about this. But Wendy's 25, and again, her, her dad and her uncle find her dead after she'd already been dead for a week. And I hate to be graphic about it, but when you think about the egregious nature of this crime, he let her sit there and decompose and then had the goal, the audacity to claim self-defense at trial, never called the cops, never called paramedics, no evidence of self-defense. And as I said, the initial judge rejected it wholesale. And then you have this family who, gosh, he only got 23 years in the initial trial for killing Wendy Trainer in cold blood, traveling across the country to murder her So, you know, they're not happy with the outcome of that, but at least it's something. And then they find out because of some technicality or, you know, uh, concern over racial bias that the conviction's thrown out. So they're preparing themselves, stealing themselves to go through the entire trial process again, which I can't imagine is easy for a family. And then they find out and they're not even told that there is a sweetheart plea deal that would cut the original crime, the sentence, in half and drop the related gun charge in a state like Washington, where we care so much about gun violence, somebody who kills someone with a gun, you're going to drop the gun charge. So the, what this family, what Wendy's tr- trainer's family has been through is, is egregious enough. And as I said, you know, there was supposed to be hearing on this case last week. The judge recused himself because he had worked with the prosecutor on the case before. I don't know if that's just because he doesn't want to touch the political nature of this with a 10-foot pole, doesn't want his name on it. So anyway, we're expecting this Friday for there to be a hearing in this case in regard to this potential sweetheart plea deal. And we're going to every freaking day on the show this week talk about this case because it has to, if, if this is allowed to happen, and this is what the family knew, If they allowed this to just go through, they didn't raise hell, they didn't reach out to media outlets, they didn't get Ann Bremner, who's an attorney in the Seattle area, on board to help them get attention to this case. They knew it was just going to happen, you know, behind closed doors, not in the light of day, and they refused to allow it. And I don't blame them, but there's a, a broader issue here that I think fits within the theme of this show and what we talk about, just the unreasonable nature of, of what's happening. Now, I, I'm of two minds about this. Either this is all about race, 
and you've got uh, a black guy, white girl. The initial uh, case is overturned because of jury selection, some reference to O.J. Simpson. Um, and now, you know, Pierce County prosecutors are like, oh, we don't want to deal with the racial uh, undertones of this. So we're just going to give him a sweetheart deal and let him walk out of prison by 2025. But there's this other element of the failure of the justice system to prioritize victims and to prioritize to true justice for the sake of either expediency or convenience. To say, eh, you know, rather than, you know, going through a whole trial process, let's just, you know, get this one out, offer them a plea deal, as they do in so many cases. But when you talk to the family of Wendy Trainer, I don't think they care if it's convenient, if it's quicker, if they can get past this, move past this, because a plea deal will help them avoid a trial. They don't want that. They don't want that. What's happening is not justice on any level. And, you know, when you talk about plea deals, I mean, back when I used to cover crime and justice full time before I dive, d dove into politics, that used to be my beat. Plea deals aren't uncommon, but typically you'd see them trotted out in a horrifying case like this if the prosecution feared that there was a weakness to their case if they brought it to trial. If the prosecution feared that if we don't offer this person a plea, then they might be acquitted at trial and walk free, so at least it's something. And I can understand that. I can understand a plea deal done for the sake of trying to make sure that violent criminals have some accountability for their actions. But when you look at the facts of this case, there is nothing stopping Pierce County prosecutors from trying and convicting Joshua Ellis on the facts and the merits of the case. There are no weaknesses in their case. There are no weaknesses in their case. And the family is ready to go into a whole new trial if that is what, is gonna ha if that is what is it is going to take to have some sort of justice for Wendy Trainer. And so I would appeal to the Pierce County Prosecutor's Office not to give this man a plea deal for the sake of convenience not to give this man a plea deal for the sake of political correctness, for the sake of expediency. So like I said, we're not going to let this case go. We'll be talking about different aspects and angles of this case all week on the show, because this isn't just about Wendy Trainer, although it is about getting Wendy justice, and it's about justice for her family. But it is about drawing attention to the sad state of our criminal justice system and how it seems to cater to violent criminals instead of innocent victims. And it's not right. This is a strong case. It is a case that can easily be won on the facts. And the Pierce County Prosecutor's Office ought to take it to trial.